Jason, and this is Just Watches. Okay, today we have the second Damasco I have had on the channel. The first one I just borrowed, but I really felt like I wanted to pick one up for myself, so I was able to get this one used, and I really like this one. I put a link to the review I did of the Damasco DS30, that was the previous Damasco I had, in the upper right-hand corner now. So as for this Damasco, the DA34, I actually like it more than the DS30. However, before we get to the review, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So for price and availability, at the time of this recording, I believe this watch is being phased out and replaced by an in-house movement version. For example, the similar DA36 is now available with an in-house movement and has been named the DK36. When this one was available, it retailed for around $1,200. So the case is 40 millimeters in diameter, 48 millimeters lug to lug, 12 millimeters thick, and then has a 28 millimeter lug with opening. The case is Damasco's ice hardened steel, and has a blasted finish that is consistent across the entire case. Crown guards envelop the crown, and the case is quite flat overall. There is a gentle curve down of the lugs, and these lugs are drilled for easy strap changes. The case has a very no-nonsense vibe, and while I picked this one up used, I can't find a single mark on it, which is a testament to just how scratch-resistant this ice-hardened steel is. The stock strap is 20 millimeters, but the ends actually flare out to about 24 millimeters, creating a line from the lug to the edge of the strap. The strap tapers down to 18 millimeters at the tail and features matching red stitching. The leather is very robust and comfortable. The pin and buckle features the same ice hardened finish as the case and is signed with the Damasco D. There's even an extra section of leather that sits between your wrist and the pin and buckle for extra comfort. This is a high quality strap that feels purpose made for this watch. The screw in case back is the same ice hardened steel as the rest of the case. Information about the watch is deeply inscribed into the case back. This is an all business case back which makes sense on this tool type of watch. This watch is powered by the ETA 2836-2. This is a hacking hand winding 28,800 vibration per hour movement with a 38 hour power reserve and a stated accuracy depending on the grade. This movement also has both the day and date that change instantaneously at midnight, which is really cool to see. And then you can of course quick set them both. And then on the time graph for this one's keeping amazing time, running between zero, about zero and one in the dial up position and then zero and minus one with the crown up. The six millimeter crown has the same ice hardened finished steel as the rest of the case. The threading and unthreading action is extremely smooth and it's easy to get a grip on this crown despite these larger crown guards. Overall the action between the positions is incredibly snappy. The flat sapphire crystal is flush with the case and is treated with anti-reflective coating on the top and bottom. This makes the crystal almost completely invisible for most angles and really helps the dial pop. The only downside to anti-reflective coating on the outside of the crystal is it can't scratch or flake. And indeed, this has happened a little bit on this watch, but it's incredibly difficult to notice. If you do order directly from Damasco, you can request that they only put the anti-reflective coating on the underside of the crystal if that's something you're worried about. Now, I absolutely absolutely love the dial of this watch. It's matte black with dashes around the edges for the minutes and larger dashes for each of the hours. 12, 3, 6, and 9 are doubled with 12 using a red color. This in combination with the white crosshair makes it very easy to read the time quickly. There's also almost no text apart from the Damasco D in Damasco and what I think is one of the best executions of a day date I have ever seen flanking that 3 o'clock position. Not only does the day date not displace any of the indices, it feels right at home home and feels totally balanced under Damasco and the Damasco D. In fact, I almost don't notice the day date is there except when I'm looking for it. Finally, the indices are loomed and so they are slightly raised because of that loom. All three hands are blacked out at the hand stack with the minute and hour hand in stark white and the second hand in red to match the red used at the 12 index. The splash of color really adds some fun to the watch. I think if the watch was only black and white, I don't think I would have enjoyed it nearly as much. Finally, the lengths of all three hands are a great size, making it very easy to read the time. The loom is pretty decent. It's not quite on Seiko level as far as responsiveness or brightness, but it does last a long time. And then it was pretty interesting when you fully charge it with like a UV flashlight, you can actually see the red at 12 is loomed, although this generally doesn't last very long at all. And then here is the watch on my six and three quarters inch wrist. 40 millimeter diameter is a great middling size that's gonna work on a wide variety of wrist sizes and was a good choice here. 
So pros and cons starting with the pros, well, I absolutely love the dial on this watch. It's extremely legible and clean while also integrating a date and date. Second, Damasco's ice hardening process results in a case that is extremely scratch resistant, which is great in a tool watch. Third, the strap on this watch is very nice and robust and comfortable. Last, it's a bit of a pro and a con, but there is that outer layer of anti-reflective coating. It does help make the crystal almost invisible, but it is susceptible to small chips or scratches. And then as for cons, that outer anti-reflective coating could be a con for you. And then finally, for everything Damasco does perfect, I wish they would just boost their loom a little bit so it's a little bit more bright and responsive. Last, and this is relatively minor, but if you look very closely at the hands, the application of loom isn't per perfectly smooth. However, this is probably not something you're going to notice unless you're looking for it. As for comparables, Sin is an obvious choice at around the same price. For less, I would consider the Atticus Icarus, which I actually reviewed, and I'll provide a link to that review in the upper right-hand corner now. It has a very similar feel for just north of half the price of this Damasco. So there you have it. What do you think of this Damasco DA34? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason, and you've been watching Just Watches.